Hi there, traders. Now, this is Brad. I just want to give you a bit of a, an extra tune-up on Mondays, where the potential opportunities are, get you to think of a little bit more big picture as opposed to just, you know, short-term, you know, micromanaging the hourly charts and all this sort of stuff. Now, just having a look. Um, now, we just out of the Asian session. The Nikkei is open. We're, we're seeing a little bit of uh, selling here early doors. Now, I haven't really pinpointed the, the culprit for pushing the Nikkei down. But, um, you know, that's going to put a little bit of a risk-off situation in the market. Now, if we come back over to the uh, major currency pairs, okay, you can start to see the uh, few of them sort of just drifting a little bit lower just with that Nikkei on the open. Now, that's going to be, should really be the Aussie just a little drifting a little bit lower. I mean, Kiwi, these things are off like sort of 10 or 15 points if that. Dollar Yen has sort of just tweaked down through uh, a support level. And that, that's where a little bit of the uh, selling and the Nikkei sort of push lower is coming to play. Um, now, what we've got is a situation technically, uh, I mentioned it in the today's FX Market Insight, where the currency is just slowly, if anything, squeezed. It's probably not even a squeeze term really because it just sort of moved higher on Friday, a little bit of weak dollar. Uh, I think the overriding sterling was probably the major culprit to get the US dollar on the back foot a bit. You know, with the sort of hawkish turn out of the Bank of England. Now, that's the rest of the currencies have enjoyed that little run. Now, sterling's trading sideways at the moment. Um, dollar CAD, you saw that massive spike up on the on the CPI numbers on Friday and straight back to where it is. I think oil is going to come, really come into play. And I think we're going to see uh, dollar CAD. I mean, I think there's a good chance for it to you know, drop a couple of hundred points back towards 130, the figure. But where do I see that happening? Now, this is where the daily charts come into play. So I want you to get a bit of perspective on, on what you're looking at. Now, I've got the, the same major currency pairs all sort of mapped out here on a daily perspective. This is where you can come back and sort of get an overall view of what's going on. Now, I mentioned in the FX Market Insight, there's a bit of a, bit of a sort of key reversal day on a few of these major currency pairs. And what technical analysts refer to is it's like usually a lower low followed by a higher high straight away. Now, what you want to do is, is tune up your daily charts, right? Just having them all squished up is nice. But then if you, if you roll them out, you can get a bit of an idea of where things are actually going. So, and where the potential is. So looking at the Aussie, for instance, now the low on that previous run down was, was down here at 74.10. Well, you know what? It's actually broken above that. And there's potential here for um, the Aussie, you know, I think to head back towards, you know, this is a bit of a stretch, but towards 76 cents. I mean, that's sort of where it's heading back towards. There's no resistance levels around anywhere closer. So 76 sort of 20, 30, to me, that's where it's going. And we, we could be looking to get in, get long around 74.10. All right, so that's the Aussie. Now, as you'll see, as we go through this process, you can start to really identify a bit more about the bigger picture. Okay, so let's just have a look through the rest of these major currency pairs. Now, just coming back to the Kiwi. Um, now, we do have a newly sort of formed resistance line. So the Kiwi, right, generally follows the Aussie. And there's no major... Uh, we, we do have the RBNZ on Thursday. But until then, the Kiwi as well looks like for all money to me to be heading back towards, you know, potentially up towards 69 and three quarters. Okay, if, if the Aussie starts to sort of rally back towards uh, 76, I, I think this, this is potentially over the coming days, this week. Don't forget, it's a, it's a week where there's not a huge amount of economic uh, data. Okay, it's the last week of the month. All the big numbers are out. So we may just see these currencies drift. And you'll see it a bit more obvious uh, on the rest of the pairs. Now, let me just come back through um, and focus on this. Then I'll, I'll give you a bit of a wrap. So look at dollar yen. I mean, long term, it's, it's banging away sideways. There's not a hell of a lot of activity. But if we do focus in on here, we do dr drill in a bit, you can see there's a, a support trend line here, right, on the dailies. We've got the, the basis there down, down here. And there's your uh, secondary level. And there's the third touch coming into play. You know what? Funnily enough, right around just under where it is now, 109.57. So potentially... I know it's Monday and it's just breaking into the cloud. That's probably going to be enough to get uh, the Japanese traders selling and potentially push it through that daily support line. And we may start to see this thing. I think it's got very big uh, legs to get down towards 107.5, 108. Um, so that's something I'll be looking at very closely straight after this, um, 
webinar actually. Now look, come back over here to Euro. Once again, let's just widen out the perspective, the view. That's why having a, a, a tool that does your, your analysis very quickly and efficiently like Reuters comes into play because I can actually drop from one visual to another. Uh, and you can see here, right, if I just look at Euro, okay, it, it is in a bit of a downtrend. We had that sort of, as I said, that sort of key reversal day where it's, it's bottomed out again down here at 115. Around 115.10, looks like a bit of a double bottom. Okay, 115.06. That's, not, that's probably solid enough. And with the dollar, the US dollar sort of losing momentum, as I've mentioned, I think we can see this back to 117.5. I mean, it's only at 116, already at 116.5 already, but potentially 117.5 uh, absolutely, or even, you know what, maybe even back towards 118.50. That's, and I'm talking this week, it looks like it's, it's just got, there's enough room for it to move um, that the euro could easily head back towards, you know, that previous high up here at 118.50. The technicals aren't, you know, the solid downward move is, is losing momentum. That's what I'm trying to highlight. Now, Sterling, once again, you're coming back to your, uh, find out where the latest resistance levels are. Well, we've got a bit of a resistance level here around 132.92. Let me just blow that up. So you can see where the, um, you know, the currencies have been banging around here. I'm just trying to isolate that, that uh, resistance level. You know what, through 132.92, I know there's a whole heap of uh, talk about Brexit and a bit of unrest about that. But as far as the technical side, side of things go, this is at a bit of a crossroads. And if it can crack through 132.92 or 133, the figure, I think there's a chance for it to uh, at least get back up towards these highs around 135. I mean, there's no resistance here. So we break through that, it starts to sort of hammer towards, well, that's, that's, that's when traders start to really um, question what is the next level. Now, one thing that you, if you've gone through the advanced trader course is you'd be looking at potential uh, Fibonacci retracements. Okay, we've got the high up there at 143.76. We've got the low. We don't have any major um, resistance levels. Okay, so that's one thing you've got to sort of bear in mind. So what else can you use? Well, this is when traders will use Fibonacci's and you're starting to look for, um, you know, potential, potential levels where this thing can go to. Now, big round numbers when they do break through these levels are good to keep an eye on. That's where you have those psychological levels. So just make sure you focus on those. But and then you can sort of line them up and think, well, 134 figure, yeah, that's a psychological level, but it's also 23.6% retracement from that high to the low 130.99. So maybe that's a bigger level to focus on and a potential buying opportunity. But it's a 132 and a half, so it's got to get a fair way. And then you're looking at the, uh, if you do get long, where could it potentially come back to? Well, you know what, 38.2, 135.87. That's fair play. Once again, there's no major technical levels around. So you're potentially looking at FIBOs for, um, you know, your potential entries and uh, target levels to get uh, into those currencies. So that's sterling. Once again, looks like it's a pretty good setup for a um, move to the top side. Now, I come over to dollar CAD. This is the real long-term perspective. I mean, it's... Uh, it's I mean, this just gives you a very good visual of, of what's going on dollar cad you can see how it's popped high here weak canadian um sort of data you've got uh nafta geopolitical situations all over the place i've got oil inverted here on the left hand um axis um and that oil is at 68 bucks so that's that green um line you can see there which is you know in this situation it's going down but that's because i've got it inverted so i can see the natural correlation with oil and dollar CAD. Um, and that's because you know, the CAD's the, the base currency. So the, um, what you want to do is, is, is um, look, at, look at the pair here. There's, there's a huge potential. I, I think it's, it's up here in the middle of nowhere, right? And if we really focus in tightly on the current price action, um, see so you've had that spike higher and then a lower low. This is where we're you know, purist, technical purists get really excited. They would sort of call that an outside reversal day, this sort of level. You know, if you're looking at candlesticks, you know, like a shooting star sort of scenario, that is what they look at and go, oh yeah, that's, that should potentially go lower. But what technical guys don't understand is, is the fundamental perspective. Now, fundamentally, dollar caddy is heading to the top side. Really weak inflation numbers, weak retail sales, 
we've got NAFTA issues, geopolitical issues, but then, you know, underlying its biggest resource, oil, is rallying. So what does that do for us? Well, at some stage, dollar cat or the Canadian dollar will come back and start trading with oil. I think there's um, a big chance for a move down here. What it's going to need is oil to continue to move to it to increase. So keep heading that way, and uh, and just you know just a hint, a slightest hint of positive information. Now that may come from Polos' speech this week, but you know it's hard to go against, hard to get short up here. There's like no no levels to get short against. But um, you know in this situation as well, you, you start to look at old. Uh, resistance levels, which are now going to act as support. This could be a potential level for us. But once again, that's almost 300 points lower to 130 the figure. What you can do is, and this is where I was looking at on the FX market inside, is have a look at the um, um, the CAD crosses. Which which of the CAD crosses is potentially the best to get into? And I think that's where, uh, you know, CAD yen in particular may be a, the better trading opportunity. But just looking here at dollar yen, so let, let me just give you my sort of, weekly perspective where I think things are going with the currencies. I think we can see Aussie high up towards 76.50 or 76 the figure this week. It's only 150 points away. I think Kiwi back towards 70. Dollar yen, I think it, you know, if it breaks down through this cloud at 108, I think we could really see this down towards 107, but definitely 108, get it down uh, a bit as it drifts this week. Euro, well, I, I actually think 117.50 is probably selling it short since it's already at 116.5. I think we could see euro up towards 118.5 over the coming this week. I was going to say coming days, but let's just give it this week. Sterling also potentially back to uh, at least 134 um, on riding on that strong Bank of England sentiment. Dollar CAD, well, it's up here in the boondocks. I think we'll see a correction, but that's more speculative than anything else. All right, so that's the majors, right? And, and I'm just putting this together. This is what something you need to get used to, to do um, yourself is have a look at that uh, technical backdrop against your, uh, against your rallies. All right, and that's where you can start to sort of put, put this short-term picture into play. Once again, dolly end down through 109.57 on the, on the daily charts. Looks like a potential uh, bigger move to the downside. I'll be looking at that. That may be, actually, that dolly end move may be the catalyst for the uh, rally in, in the Aussie, um, you know, pushing that US dollar down, keep euro heading to the top side, and uh, there's a nice little entry there in uh, sterling above 132.90. See, we can see this thing higher as well. Dollar CAD, once again, probably still in the too hard basket, but CAD yen looks to me like the uh, nicest pair. Anyway, just being Monday, I thought I'd give you a bit more detailed uh, analysis, technical analysis, looking at the dailies, with the uh, and combining those with the hourlies to give you a bit more overall perspective so you can sort of plan out where the potential for these currencies to move is this week all right we don't have a huge amount of economic data to uh, follow so keep an eye on the uh, the overall technical perspective all right guys good luck any questions jump in the trade zone ask me a question or, or fire us an email cheerio